dreadful objects so familiar, all pity choked with custom of fell deed. These are spirits ranging for revenge with Ate by his side, come on from hell. Do you know the rest, Scott? Do you know your strength? Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. War indeed. Welcome back, Derek. That pompous blowhard did love to witter on in Shakespearean. But in truth, the beloved bard's influence can be seen woven deeply into early Teen Wolf, and specifically in the early character arc of Derek Hale. That was Derek Hale. You remember, right? Remember what? His family? They all burned to death in a fire years ago. With his tragic backstory, thirst for power, failed reign as Alpha, Derek Hale's early character arc holds its own as a compelling and tragic narrative worthy of the Elizabethan stage. Out. Out. Brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It's a tale told by an idiot. Full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Derek's story begins, like many Shakespearean protagonists, with a catalytic event, the recent death of his sister. This comparison cast Peter Hale in a role similar to that of Hamlet's uncle Claudius. Now, we don't learn about it for weeks, but when you look at it, Peter's attack on Laura definitely mirrors Claudius' poisoning of Hamlet's father. Now, Hamlet here. Tis given out that sleeping in my orchard a serpent stung me. But no, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. My uncle. Aye, that incestuous, adulterate beast. Both Peter and Claudius did the deed to claim a throne. And like Claudius, Peter then feigns innocence. I need your help. If you can hear me, I need you to give me a sign. Blink. Raise a finger, anything, just, just someone to point me in the right direction, okay? Someone killed Laura. Your niece, Laura. Peter does this by pretending to be comatose, but all the while he's out there carrying out his plans and devious machinations. And, like Hamlet, Derek is left to chase his own tail, coming up with scheme after scheme in an attempt to reveal the truth. What do you want? I don't know who you are or who to protect you. What are you doing? Scott, get out of here! Stop! Stop! Look, when he's conscious, he can keep himself from healing, but unconscious, he can't. Are you out of your mind? What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me! Help! Help! Oh, oh. oh no. A rat? Dead for it, duck it dead! No! 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 Oh, I am slain. Oh, me, what have thou done? Thou wretched, rash, intruding fool, farewell. You have already decided. Rage and throw it on you. As the tables turn and Derek kills Peter to gain the Alpha Spark, we see the echoes of Macbeth's rise to power after killing King Duncan. And withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf, whose howls his watch, thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his design, Moves like a ghost. Just as Macbeth creates a powerful enemy in Macduff, Derek, right after becoming an alpha, inadvertently creates an enemy in the Canima.
in both cases. We learn that getting power doesn't necessarily equate to the ability to wield that power effectively. Don't worry, you're still an alpha, but as usual, not a particularly competent one. And in both cases, the failed leaders attempt murder in order to cure their mistakes. There's blood upon thy face. Uh, tis Banquo's then. Tis better thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut. That I did for him. Thou art the best of the cutthroats. I'm not going to let you kill her. Well, who said I was going to do it? Derek's attempts to kill the Kanema and Macbeth's killing of his rivals can be viewed as a consequence of the quest for power and the failed struggles to effectively wield that power. The castle of Macduff I will surprise, seize upon Fife, and give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. Both Macbeth and Derek face moral dilemmas as they commit acts that go against their stated principles. Macbeth's moral decline leads to his alienation from others, and Derek's actions strain his relationships with his fellow supernaturals, mainly Scott, and within his own chosen followers, his pack. Well, I told you there was a price. If you didn't say it would be like this. Yeah, but I told you how to survive. You do it as a pack, and you're not a pack without an alpha. We know. You want to look for another pack? And much like the renegade king, Derek's leadership is marked by disappointments, betrayals, and the death of the majority of those who supported him. <sighs> it's okay. It's okay, Derek. Sorry. Out to damn spot. Out, I say. The Thane of Fife had a wife. Where is she now? What will these hands ne'er be clean? The queen, my lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. <sighs> Unlike Macbeth and Shakespeare's other tragic characters like Hamlet, Derek survives long enough to reach a redemption. Careful. Don't worry. I know going too far could kill me. That's not exactly what I meant. With his only remaining sister near death, Derek faces the ultimate choice, save Cora or keep the power he was willing to kill for. While the Bards boys usually do acknowledge their mistakes in the end, we never really get to the level of complete redemption we saw with Derek in your average Elizabethan tragedy. But Derek does fit the mold of the tragic hero. He starts with good intentions, he is flawed, he makes grave mistakes and faces dire consequences for those mistakes. His journey is a testament to the timeless themes of ambition, revenge, and the corrupting influence of power. 